last year was an awesome experience. This year is beyond your imagination. It is the second West Africa Cold Chain Summit and Exhibition. I would like to call on the chairman of the local organizing committee, Mr. Tunde uh, Okoya, to come and address the conference. Thank you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, last year we had a successful meeting edition of the first West Africa Coaching Summit and Exhibition, the WACT 2018. At this same venue, with over 10 exhibitors and 150 participants, it is again with great pleasure that I welcome you to the second West Africa Coaching Summit and Exhibition holding here at the Radisson Du Hotel in Kenya. Our theme for this year is Unlocking Practical Coaching Solutions in Africa. The cold chain is one tool that you can deploy to do that. This is a huge opportunity market for that, as I know you know, that's why you're here, that's why your businesses are interested in this. There's a ranking in the same report uh, looking at the amount of refrigerated warehouse space uh, per urban resident in different countries in the world. And Nigeria is very low uh, in that ranking. In fact, it's close to the bottom. So there's a huge opportunity for your businesses to expand into that virgin market to uh, make the successful business models and to uh, help the well-being uh, of this region's residents at the same time. So may, may the force be with you and I look forward to the rest of this uh, uh, conference for the next couple of days and I look forward to meeting many of you. As well, know, the co chain is, uh, for me, I think it's one of the crit critical aspects of our um, infrastructure that we need to put off. Um, so I want to thank the organizer for this important event and also looking at the team unlocking practical cold chain solution in Africa. And just like the last speaker says, um, we are yet to get to where it is. And why I'm concerned is because the export angle of it, the trade aspect of it, we are, we are, not, we are just not moving. So I want to seek the intervention of this of this program or this workshop to come up with appropriate uh, um, solutions or recommendations that will help to get out of this box. This is a new product, a new weapon that we need to fight, we use to fight post harvest losses. And it is the ultimate of the weapons. If we get it wrong, we we'll continue to lose. If you don't have prob you don't have problems, your brain does not work efficiently. It's power is a problem, but it puts your brain, your brain on full gear. There are many ways you can overcome this. There are new ways, new technologies, and so on. Come up and don't don't lift up your hands and say there's nothing we can do. There's so much we can do. All these solar panels and so on. What do we need to do? Do we bring them in free of charge? Do we have subsidies on them? Do we sell specific companies to do it? Because the markets and the possibilities are so huge. You heard the previous speakers. In actual fact, uh, my friend and brother from the UK, I think you got the statistics wrong. You said we use about between two and 20%. I think that would be very polite and political. <laughs> the truth is this, I give an example. The last speaker, from the Export Promotion Council, I think, talked about oranges. I am a dealer in oranges. Went to Boko, ordered a truckload of oranges. The gentleman gets there, who owns the orchard, gets his people, I want oranges, bring down oranges. His boys climbed the orange trees. And what did they do? They shook the orange trees. And the oranges did what? They fell. That fall alone, 30% is lost. Yes. Then they load them on my truck, the same truck that brought cattle to Boko. And will you load the whole truck of oranges? Will you want to be the orange at the bottom? <laughs> now, another 25% is lost. How many so far? 
Good. Now, it gets to the markets, mile 12. They heap them on each other. They are there for three or four days. Again, would you like to be the one at the bottom? You give up. So, another 10% is what? So basically, that is the level of challenge we have. But there's a solution because we're all gathered here to find a solution. And that solution we shall find. And we're not going to find it next year. We're going to start it today. Thank you very much for that. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor and privilege to stand before uh, this gathering. The issue before us, which is very important, is the coaching um, value chain. And a lot of people have spoken of the importance of this. Growing up as a child, I have a privilege of being a farmer's child and I'm very proud to say so because it was from those proceeds that I got my school fees paid to the latter. Today, over the years, we know that the post-harvest nurses are considered a major challenge for the SMEs. Maybe my father was an SME player, but he didn't know it. Today I've grown and I've realized that the same challenges that have in years gone past are still confronting us as Nigerians or as Africans. I did a small statistic and discovered that the value of post-harvest losses that we lose in food is not less than 10 billion US dollars in terms of value. And that's just about 50%. So if we do not take appropriate measures to address that issue, I'm sure that it's going to, the statistics are going to go higher. Today we are confronted with people of you and I wanting to have fresh vegetables delivered on your tables without wanting to have a contamination on it, without the test being altered. But how do you achieve that? This is our second West Africa coaching summit and exhibition. We call it Waxe 2019. We decided to uh, team it uh, unlocking practical coaching solutions in Africa because the sustainable development goals include zero hunger, and several other uh, solutions for agricultural sustainability and nutrition. So therefore the responsibility of the coaching industry is to be an integral part of a sustainable development agenda for agriculture, for food, for nutrition, for healthcare, and the private sector. <laughs>